At around the age of six years old, I had a wonderful revelation. Teachers teach. Well, to be specific, teachers make people smarter. So I continued thinking, well, if a teacher makes someone smarter, then having more teachers makes you more smart, right? Not so bad, six-year-old me. Basic math. <laughs> But then I had the thought that would change my life forever. If t having teachers makes you smart and having more of them makes you smarter, I should make everyone my teacher because anyone can teach you something and having the most teachers means you're the smartest, or so I thought at the time. Well, when I was around that age, it really just meant kind of watching people to see what I could learn from them or uh, interacting with them. But this also meant an interest in psychology, an interest and now passion that hasn't subsided in the slightest and has only become more powerful over time. But passion does not always come from a good place. Sadly, as pure and genuine as my love for people began, it soon became fueled by negativity. You see, I experienced many difficult and rather uncontrollable events in my life. Household drama, divorce, disillusionment with parents, and eventually one of those parents passing away. And due to this, I had a lot of negative emotion and energy that I felt I had to put somewhere. And I didn't want to put them somewhere in a you know, bad place so that I would turn out, well, bad. So I wanted to put them in a healthier place. I thought my only productive option was to put them into this goal of becoming smart. But because I was putting my more negative thoughts and emotions into this goal, it transitioned from being a goal about learning to feeling in control when I actually had none. I thought I had to make up for the difficulties I had at that time by setting myself up to live an absolutely fantastical and unrealistic adult life. Um, and due to this, I also thought that if I became some kind of super genius, I could fix all of my problems, both the ones created by the past and present in the future. Uh, well, wasn't a very good idea. Sadly, school didn't help uh, with this impression. We all know that one kid, either in a class or in a grade, the kind of kid that can pass a test when the whole class fails, the one that's so good at their work and managing it, that they definitely have their tract for an Ivy League university set, and probably the whole life set, right? Well, to me, this kind of culture around these sorts of people and the existence of these sorts of people and the structure of the school that they were in made me think, well, intelligence is probably the only way to have a good in life, right? Well, uh, this kind of opinion on intelligence can extend into the real world as well. Uh, some of the biggest names we have in society today are people who can be called smart, people who spearheaded innovation or in high-tech industries, if not both. Uh, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs, the list goes on and on and on. And, you know, that makes intelligence seem really great. Can get you good social standing, can get you to a good college, and more relevant to me, good grades. But at the same time, it's like the American dream, right? I have to be smart. Now, everything I just ex described uh, actually contributes to a problem that I am discussing today, and the problem that I personally experienced, which is using intelligence as a benchmark for self-worth. Uh, when it comes to this, I believe that it's a symptom of a much deeper problem. And it's rather problematic and creates, well, a bad situation, both internally and externally in our society. Now, I've gone on and on about uh, you know, using intelligence as a benchmark for self-worth and what I've done with it, but you may be asking, well, if someone's doing this, How do they stop? How would I stop if I'm doing it? Well, I came to an answer that was relatively simple, but at the same time was difficult for me to implement and accept. Emotional intelligence. Now you might be thinking, wait, this is some kind of joke? The way to fix using intelligence as a benchmark for self-worth is a different kind of intelligence? Has this kid learned anything? Well, uh, I know it's pretty bad wordplay, but emotional intelligence is actually the kind of thing that prevents the faulty thinking of intelligence equals worth, or money equals worth, or beauty equals worth, and so on and so forth. The way I've categorized them is, there's a logical intelligence that we have. It's a lot like a parent. Clear cut, straightforward, and analytical, and tries to keep you out of trouble. Well, emotional intelligence is a lot like a child. It controls your life. And no matter what you do, you have to go along with the child on a basic level. 
protect it, feed them, so on and so forth, as much as sometimes people may wish not to do that. Now, uh, when it comes to emotional intelligence and logical intelligence, the interaction that can happen between them is similar to that of a parent and child at times. A parent might be trying to tell their child that something is logically correct and give them a whole slew of reasons as to why, and the child will simply not accept it. It will be like, well, until the child experiences it for themselves, they won't learn. Feelings and emotions can be like this as well, which is what made uh, my process of learning and eventually feeling my emotions better and letting them run their course rather than just describing them to myself. And this interaction would happen all the time. So rather than shouting at my emotions, I decided, yeah, let's just try and feel. And this is coming from a guy who at one point thought emotions would get in the way of becoming intelligent, as we like to think, well, if you have to wrestle with your emotions all the time to make way for rational thought, then things can happen and go wrong. Well, it was a slow process. But over time, I did begin to feel more. And uh, this could lead to issues, and it did. Whereas, uh, you know, issues like having to wrestle for those emotions for more rational thought and also just feeling more ticked off at things I'd normally be able to ignore. But on the flip side, I've never felt more sure or confident in my entire life, so I'd say it worked. Now, regretfully, our visions of success in society rarely, if ever, actually include the vision of an emotionally healthy life or an emotionally robust life. And it's a very difficult situation to deal with because I believe that our culture and society specifically in this country are one of the more materialistic ones in the world. Uh, if you have an emotional problem, you're a lot more likely to be told to, hey, work until you're in charge or be directed towards uplifting your external world rather than focusing on the internal one meaning people might throw themselves against the wall of their work or trying to find a new relationship rather than focusing inward so their emotional state crumbles regardless of how much they actually succeed. And uh, right now, from people aged 10 and above, uh, about 12% of them in the US use antidepressants uh, and we are seeing the highest rates of depression and anxiety we've ever noticed in college students in general. And college is supposed to be the most fun time in your life, but people spend it agonizing over the present and the future. And from people aged 10 to 34, suicide is the second most leading cause of death. And so those rates are going up, not down. So this is most certainly an issue. Now, I'm not saying that using intelligence as a benchmark for self-worth is the issue that's causing these statistics. I'm saying it's a symptom of a much deeper problem, which is... Uh, not having rather developed emotional intelligence or not even knowing that emotions can cause those problems in the first place. I mean, I think when dealing with this issue, we really have to ask ourselves this. If there is a person who is having an issue and their whole life they have been taught that success means success in the more external world around you and making money and possibly indulging in other pleasures, legal or not, rather than uh, focusing on the life inside. Well, how could people even know that emotions could be something they could work on? Why would people think that it's something to work on when they've never been told that it's an area that you must be successful in in order to feel satisfied? I mean, it's kind of the, in the definition of the word when you think about it. Satisfaction, feel good. So, But at the same time, the only thing that we have to be afraid of in this time, regardless of the statistics I just mentioned or the difficulty of any of these changes actually being implemented, is that humans are very, very tenacious. Probably the most tenacious creatures on this planet, besides cockroaches. And um, with regards to that, they are absolutely terrifying both towards their enemies, but also towards their problems in life when they get serious about it. And I think that, really, that's what we have to remember, both about ourselves and our ability to change our lives. Now, about a year or two ago, this speech would have just been me going on and on about uh, something that would make me feel better about myself and then try to clear up my insecurities. And I would have thought, hey, this is a pretty respectable closeness to my goal. But then I would have gone on and tried to find another thing to fix those insecurities without actually dealing with the problem. Today, none of that really matters. This TED Talk, it's about me, but it's also about you. It's about making people feel good, and it's about feeling good about myself. And 
if a single person is helped or given a revelation by what I just said, well, I've done something good. And that's really all that matters. Thank you.